Hoi luisteraar, ik ben Erik van Compliance Adviseert en heb een leuke mededeling. Studiecentrum Kerkenbos, de opleider op het gebied van fraude, opsporing en compliance, komt met iets bijzonders. Als luisteraar van deze podcast krijg je met de code COMPLIANCE100 maar liefst 100 euro korting op een fraudecursus naar keuze. Bijvoorbeeld over witwassen, financieel recht, fraudeonderzoeken en gegevensuitwisseling bij fraudebestrijding. Profiteren? Ga naar www.kerkenbos.nl Kerkenbos schrijf je met CK in het midden en SCH op het eind en gebruik de kortingscode COMPLIANCE100. Compliance. We just need your compliance. Je luistert naar Compliance Adviseert. Deskundigen vertellen over compliance en integriteit bij Nederlandse financiële instellingen. We just need your compliance. Clients in Cyprus may seem high risk for a financial institution in the Netherlands. But why exactly? The last follow-up mutual evaluation report of the Financial Action Task Force relating to the implementation of anti-money laundering and counter-terrorist financing standards in Cyprus was undertaken in November 2021. According to that evaluation, Cyprus was deemed compliant for 16 and largely compliant for 20 of the FATF 40 recommendations. It remains highly effective for zero and substantially effective for three of the effectiveness and technical compliance ratings. Cyprus scores a 53 out of 100 in 2021 on the Transparency International Corruption Index. According to the website Investopedia, the island of Cyprus officially lost its status as a tax haven in 2020 when the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD, declared the country, along with Luxembourg and Seychelles, had been found to be largely compliant with standards set forth by the Global Forum on on Transparency and Exchange of Information for Tax Purposes. The rating is the same as that given to the United States, Germany and the United Kingdom. That doesn't seem to match with the high-risk reputation of Cyprus. However, in the context of the Russian invasion of Ukraine on 29th of March 2022, the EU Commission told Malta and Cyprus to end their golden passport schemes immediately. I'd like to understand more about the risks with Cyprus. Lately, I've read interesting posts of Anna Stilianu, A few weeks ago, I had the honor to have a chat with Anna for the first time via Google Meet, and now she's the guest in our Compliance Adviseert podcast, willing to provide us from the inside with some more context around the past and the current situation in the politics and financial sector in Cyprus. Wow, that was a long introduction, but now you are here. Thanks for joining us, Anna. You're very welcome, Ari. It's a pleasure to be with you and a pleasure to be invited in your podcast. How would you currently rate Cyprus on geographical risk, Anna? Uh, Cyprus is, uh, first to say that Cyprus is a small island in the Mediterranean, about one million population. Uh, for many years, yes, Cyprus was considered, as you correctly stated, as a tax haven. The country for a long time was offering, and it's still, uh, it was offering a low tax, uh, corporate tax. We had a huge banking industry. The corporate tax rate was uh, really low. And then, as you said, 2012, about, it was forced to increase it to 12.5%. The global financial crisis that uh, was, we had the consequences of 2008 uh, affected the island a lot, so, but this made the island to like wake up with regards to anti-money laundering. We had before a lot of Russian oligarchs and other oligarchs all over the world, but after that bailout, I don't know if you heard, do you, you heard about the bailout, two of the largest banking institutions in the island were at risk at the risk of shutting down and as a result the European Commission European Central Bank and IMF International Monetary Fund post strict 
conditions on the countries the depositors of those two large banks lost anything more than 100,000 euros. Uh, and these funds were used to capitalize the banking system. From there on, things have changed and the geographical risk of the country has, I mean, it's not now high risk jurisdiction. It has strong anti-money laundering standards since then. And these standards are implemented in the overall financial system of the island. So I would say that currently Cyprus has a low to medium geographical money laundering risk. Okay, thanks for also taking us through the a brief history of how Cyprus became less risky geographically spoken. Have you been living in Cyprus all your life? Yes, I was born here, raised here, and intend to live here. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, why? What is the weather like now? Does it have anything to do with the weather? Uh, Look, the weather here is really nice. We have an average of more than 300 days, sunny days every year. Of course, this year it was an exception. We had uh, some more rain. But we needed it, you know, when it's the weather is too dry for too long, it's bad for the trees and the environment. But overall, we have a lot of sunshine. We have an, a nice and more quiet life. I mean, I have visited large cities. I know how it is. Here, the life is very different. So I, I like the weather. It's an island, so wherever you go, you can see the beach. So I like the life here. <laughs> Yeah, I envy you a little. Yeah, (laughs) I'm a little bit jealous. What is the capital of Cyprus, actually? The capital is Nicosia or Lefkosia, you may find it somewhere. In what part of Cyprus do you live? Yes, I live in Nicosia, in the Greek part. It's actually, let's not separate the two parts. It's Greek-speaking and Turkish-speaking. Do you ever go to the uh, Turkish-speaking part? Yes, I go for a visit, but what actually happened is that in 1974, there was a war here uh, in Cyprus and Turkey took the control of the Turkish speaking side. Since 2004, we are allowed to go there and see and if we want to work, uh, but that part is under the control of Turkey. The other part is a member of the European Union, the Greek-speaking part. Uh, And we Mm -hmm. implement the European regulation, the European directive, including Mm -hmm. AML policies. Mm -hmm. The other part is mostly implementing the regulations imposed by Turkey. Is it important for us to understand in which part of Cyprus a company is established? Well, if this affects your business relationship with the client, then yes. If not then you shouldn't. I mean, if uh, for a a company that is offering its services to a European client, it needs to to take this into consideration. But if not, it's a global company, then it doesn't matter. You said there is a large financial sector in Cyprus. Is that mainly in the EU part or in the Turkish-speaking part? When I'm talking about the the information that we share, is talking about the Greek-speaking part. The Greek-speaking part, I see. Okay. And what can you tell us about your career and experience in the financial sector? So I have a a significant experience. I'm more than 20 years in the financial industry. I have worked in the banking industry for the most of the time of my career. Then I left the bank and I have joined an electronic money institution for some years. Now I'm working in a forex broker offering uh, trading in CFDs. I am uh, working as a compliance officer and head of compliance as we are organizing the department as the company is about to grow very soon. And when did you first work in a compliance type of role? When I was in the banking industry, I was on the side of implementing the anti-money laundering policies of the bank. When I left, I went to the other side, working in the compliance department. When I was in the EMI, it was actually a startup, and I was involved in the creation and updates of the policies and procedures, ensuring compliance with anti-money laundering and payment regulations. So 
that's how I started my career in compliance. I see. Well, your experience was noticeable in the interesting posts that you uh, put on LinkedIn. Uh, some listeners may even know you already for that. When and why did you start writing these interesting posts on LinkedIn? Well, uh, this started about a year ago. I remember that the first post, it took me about two hours to write it. So, And I was checking in again the next day before posting. I made changes. I was like, you know, uh, like it was a big thing. What I have decided to do is just, you know, share articles. And in the beginning, I took it on the very safe side. I was sharing articles and made a summary of the articles. Uh, but slowly, slowly, I started getting confidence. I know that I'm good in making complicated things sound simple. So I started uh, writing my own thoughts or finding information that is publicly available and is useful for AML professionals and explain it in a simple way. It's like educational posts. I, I'm trying to make it very simple to understand. That's the first goal. And the second goal is to save time to busy anti-money laundering professionals. <laughs> I think we have similar goals somehow with the podcasts and your LinkedIn posts. So <laughs> nice we found each other. Yeah. Um, yes. Is the compliance function mandated in Cypriot in law for financial institutions? Yes, all regulated entities. First, the good thing I need to say that the Cyprus law is in full compliance with the European anti-money laundering directives, which require all regulated entities to have a compliance function in place. It's mandatory. It's not optional. Yeah. So all everyone needs to have compliance officers. Every company uh, that's... is under AML law, yes. That's the same here in the Netherlands. Listeners may have already noticed this, that we are going to discuss Cyprus now. <laughs> yes. You said you rated Cyprus low, medium geographically now. Can you explain why you already did somehow in the introduction? But um, if you compare it to a few years ago, why did it change? Let's go deeper into that. Uh, I would yes. say low medium because I don't believe that any, there is a low risk country. <laughs> there is actually no low risk all over the world, in my humble opinion. Cyprus has had enough reputational damages in the pa in the past. It had what we have already discussed: the bailout that was again a very big reputational damage. Banks cannot afford in Cyprus any other reputational damages. And banks who are the gatekeepers for AML in every country, I can say now that in Cyprus they have zero tolerance to money laundering. It's safe to say also that in Cyprus, banks now have taken it to the other edge uh, in some cases with anti-money laundering measures. So if you are a company and you want to open a bank account in a bank in Cyprus, be prepared, have all the information ready and good luck <laughs> so, <laughs> the anti-money laundering standards now are very high in cyprus ah. yes ah. Uh, before it wasn't like that they were more lax they were more willfully blind let's say now these things don't exist is there tough oversight supervision or a lot of fines or are the Cypriotian people uh, aware now of the, of the risks? I would say that financial institutions are aware of the risks. You know, Cyprus is a small island, and when you live in a small country, uh, you have a specific culture. So, yes, we have some cultural problems. Uh, it's easy to find someone, to, you know, to help you do something illegal. Uh, remember the Al Jazeera, what happened? We saw the documentary probably, as we discussed before. So uh, there are some cultural issues here. Al Jazeera is an association of journalists, and they have published a documentary, the Cyprus Papers, that exposed yes. the Cyprus citizenship passport program, oh. how uh, Cyprus have provided European Cy Cyprus passport, and I'm talking about the Greek-speaking side, okay? European passport 
to yes. uh, persons that were subject to sanctions, Russian oligarchs, persons that were uh, have committed crimes in another country, corrupted people. Still in Cyprus, they have offered them this Cyprus passport if they uh, invested in property or other types of investment, I think it was 2 million euros. So they could get a passport, they and their families. But of course, money launderers could not miss that opportunity, corrupted politicians and everyone. As I said, if you know someone in the government here in Cyprus, I mean, that's what they did. They found someone to help them on a fee. And they managed, these people, these corrupted individuals, um, managed to get the Cypriot passport. That was a huge reputational damage in Cyprus. However, yes, there were some politicians that were corrupted, but this documentary does not represent the overall compliance of the island. And I can imagine that the financial institutions are somehow affected by this, but it is not... Uh, done by those financial institutions. Golden passports are handed over by the government and not by financial institutions. But I can can imagine that financial institutions are affected by this. Did you have, have you seen some of that risk? Of course, they were affected. Although actually, if you see the documentary of the, uh, that exposed Cyprus, uh, what this corrupt politicians, the Cypriot politicians were uh, doing, were finding ways to bypass the strong anti-money laundering standards of the bank. So as the bank couldn't say, no, I don't accept this customer. So they made a whole scheme. (laughs) They manipulated the information so the bank would accept the client. So the documentary, yes, it didn't expose the banks. It exposed the, the citizenship scheme. But still, I agree with you that banks were affected by that. Another reputational damage. They have another now, another scheme uh, to attract talent in Cyprus, to encourage companies to relocate their head offices in Cyprus. But it seems that it's something legitimate. As a compliance professional, did you even... Uh, notice that foreign financial institutions regard Cyprus as high risk or or did they in the past or did you also notice that they found out that the risk has decreased? Yes, I've seen that happening in the past when I was working in the bank. I was uh, uh, working when the bailout happened and after this bad incident, we I have seen that all of the correspondent banks wanted to close their account with the Cypriot banks. It was very difficult to find a correspondent bank to work with. You know what a correspondent bank is? is a large bank which is offering services in areas, in jurisdictions where you don't have access. Okay, so this I is see. a correspondent. I want to send some dollars in China from Cyprus, uh, uh, the bank in Cyprus will use a correspondent bank to use to send the money to China. It was very difficult for banks to establish business relationship with correspondent banks, either in USD or Euros. Again, at that time, it was impossible for a Cypriot citizen to open an account in another country, in the UK or Netherlands or any other European country. They treated us as high money laundering risk, which was not the case, of course. It was not about money laundering only. It was, uh, again, uh, the reasons were clearly financial at that point. Yeah, yeah. What is the economical situation in Cyprus at the moment? At the moment, things are pretty good. Cypriots were hit many times seriously financially. We started from the war 1974. We had another crash on the stock exchange in 1999. We had in 2013 the bailout again. A lot of people lost their money. Cypriots don't stop. They are willing to work. You will not see a lot of homeless people in Cyprus. We are a small island. People are very hospitable and willing to help 
other people who they know that there is indeed a need. So everyone has food on the table, although some people are having financial difficulties. But overall, the economic situation is good. I mean, we have a level of a European European country. Have you ever noticed anything yourself of, of corruption or money laundering in the financial institutions you've worked for? Of course, for a bank, like I said, the two largest banks had serious problem, serious problem financially. They don't go to that problem, you know, alone, out of nowhere. Of course, some employees, some highly ranked professionals in the bank were corrupted. So, yes, we can see that some uh, people were penalized, some uh, from the board of directors of the bank, Personally, I didn't see, I mean, I didn't leave any corruption issues, but I have seen that happening from my experience. Now, with regards to money laundering, yes, I was working in a branch of the bank, of course. I have seen tax evasion, cash deposits, trying to hide income, but uh, overall, small amounts. In Cyprus, the risk comes from uh, international crime rather than local crime. I'm talking about money laundering risk. I see. Because we don't have so high national crime with regards to this type of financial crimes. Talking about foreigners in Cyprus, do you think there are many legitimate reasons for companies from abroad to establish a company in Cyprus? Or is it something that uh, that should be regarded as unusual? No, uh, we have a lot of uh, companies in Cyprus. And as I said, now government is trying to attract even more companies to relocate in Cyprus. And honestly, (laughs) any company that comes here (laughs) doesn't want to leave. It's a nice place to have business. We We have highly educated people, a huge accounting and legal sector ready to help companies, a lot of administrative services also. So I I believe, yes, there are many reasons for a company to relocate to Cyprus. We have a nice life, fun. (laughs) I mean, especially Limassol and Paphos, the two cities on the seaside, they have a lot of companies there from abroad. Is that also because they pay less taxes there or...? In Cyprus, because the Cyprus... Yes. Yeah, yeah, I see. Do you think high-risk sectors are overly represented in Cyprus, like crypto, CFDs, gambling? With regards to crypto, we don't have yet any approval of companies that have applied for registration, so we don't have any crypto companies yet. Uh, CFDs, yes, we have a lot of brokers, but... They are operating using their passporting rights, meaning if you get a license in Cyprus, you can offer your services by making a notification all over the European Union. So those companies are targeting customers not only from Cyprus, but from all over, from all over the European Union. Their offices are here, their head offices here, but actually their business is conducted within the whole uh, European Union. And why would they conduct this, especially from Cyprus then? Uh, Apparently, as we have already said, we have um, a good taxing system, accounting services. We, uh, We have anything a company needs to operate here. You said earlier in this podcast, uh, if you want to open a bank account, uh, good luck. (laughs) And uh, (laughs) That's a problem. (laughs) What about the company register of Cyprus? If I want to consult it, is it openly accessible and trustworthy? So the business register is an open source. You can find the shareholders, the directors, the address of the company. So it's open and it's free. But recently we had the operation of the beneficial ownership register where you can see the beneficial owners of the company. From 1st June, it's operational and can be accessed by the general public and obliged entities. 
Uh, there is a fee to access the registry. If I'm not wrong, it's 3.50 euros. Uh, now, with regards to whether it's trustworthy, trustworthy, it will require some time to answer this question as it's something very recent. We also have the trust registry, which is maintained by SISEC, which was became operational uh, within May, a few days ago. So we will have to wait and see how it goes and whether they are trustworthy or not. Something that is a requirement for all regulated entities, if, for example, I conduct customer due diligence and um, I want to access a beneficial ownership register to check a company and I see that the beneficial ownership register has different information from the one from those that I have, from the information that I have for that specific company, I have to report it. So I believe it's going to work either way. What would you want to share about Cyprus with compliance professionals in the financial sector of the Netherlands? Because Cyprus had uh, reputational issues in the past, uh, it's important to understand that Cyprus is not what it used to be with regards to money laundering. Things have changed. Banks, as we have already discussed, have very high anti-money laundering standards. And, you know, banks are the gatekeepers. So if you have a strong uh, banking system with strong anti-money laundering standards, it's uh, more difficult uh, to commit money laundering. I mean, a a company to abuse a bank for money laundering purposes. Yeah, that's it. I see. Okay. And what developments do you expect for the coming years in Cyprus? So what I see is that as long as the first crypto license is approved, I be, I expect that the sector will explode. There is a lot of talent in Cyprus, a lot of interest. Uh, we have the new tax in- incentive schemes, which were announced by the government that I believe will attract many companies to relocate here and the opportunities are endless. My last question, what general advice would you want to give to compliance professionals listening, apart from visiting Cyprus, of course? (laughs) That was the first thing to say. Come here for holidays, enjoy. We have the the best beaches, that's what they say. I'm not saying that. Uh, They have the same uh, best beaches um, in the whole European Union, Cyprus and Greece, I believe. But the second thing is that Cyprus is not uh, a high-risk country with regards to money laundering. Do not be afraid to deal with Cypriot companies. We have a a strong anti-money laundering framework, so don't be afraid to onboard customers from Cyprus. All right. Great advice. Thanks for for your contribution to our podcast, uh, Anna. And uh, good luck with the LinkedIn posts as well. Thank you, Eric. It was a pleasure to be with you. Thanks for inviting me in this podcast. Have a nice day. Compliance. We just need your compliance. Dank dat je luisterde naar deze podcast. Volg onze LinkedIn-pagina en kijk op onze website complianceadviseert.nl. Heel graag tot de volgende podcast. We just need your compliance.